All right, so before we get started with today's lesson, let's go over some vocabulary. Compound events. So compound events consist of two or more simple events. We'll highlight two or more simple events. That'd be like, let's say that you rolled a die and you spin a spinner. So those are two simple events. Counting principle, that's a way to find the number of ways that two or more events can occur by multiplying. So we'll highlight multiplying the number of each event. So that could be like, we'll just say 2 times 2 times 2, which would give you 8. Dependent events, two or more events in which the outcome of one event affects the outcome of another. So that'd be like if you um, let's say like you had a bag of marbles or something and originally you have a red blue and black marble let's say that you reach in the bag and you pull out the red now you're just left with a black and blue marble. So we'll highlight the outcome of one event affects the outcome of the other event. Experimental, we'll highlight experiment. Um, so experimental, that, that could be like if you flip a coin. So I'll draw a penny here. And that's about the best I got. But anyway, so there's a penny. If you flip a coin, let's say 10 times, and you get seven heads and three tails. Fair game. That's a game in which players have an equal chance of winning. Let's go back to the coin. I'll spare you from my bad drawing this time, but it could be like heads or tails. You have, a, you have an equal chance of getting either heads or tails when you flip that coin. Alright, so independent event. Those would be two events that do not have any outcome, or that do not affect each other. So going back to the compound event example I gave you up top, that could be like if you roll a number cube and spin a spinner. Those two events have nothing to do with each other. Under dependent events, let's write down the word without replacement. Because you'll see that quite a bit in some of these word problems. Independent events, um, you might see the words with replacement, or again, they may just be two events that have nothing to do with each other. So the outcome is one possible result of an event. So like if you roll a number cube and you land on a 2, that'd be one outcome. Sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So thinking back to the number cube, your sample space would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because it has 6 sides. Theoretical. I'm just going to write the word... Think. So theoretical probability is what you think will happen, or it's what should happen. So in theory, if you flip a coin, so flip coin, we'll say 10 times, you should have 5 heads and 5 tails. That's theoretical. Tree diagram. Let's draw a tree. I'll explain what the tree, tree diagram is in a few minutes. All right, so tree diagrams are used to illustrate um, outcomes. A tree diagram is a graphical way to show all of the possible combinations in a situation or experiment. 
Simple space is the set of all of the outcomes in a probability experiment. All right, so right here, if you want to flip a coin, you can, but let's just imagine um, that you land on two heads and let's say you flip again and you get tails and heads. Tails, tails. And let's see, you got heads, tails. So I'm just kind of making those up. But anyway, a tree diagram would show all of those different outcomes. Like, if you flip a coin, you have a 50 50 chance of heads or tails. This right here represents the first flip. If you flip it again, you can get another heads or another tails. So this is one flip. This would be the second flip. So our first flip, this heads heads would be represented right here. The tails heads would be here, tails tails, and heads tails. So what is the probability of getting tails on both flips? I'll go ahead and preview that lesson with you. That'll be next class, actually. But you have a one out of two chance of getting tails on the first flip, and it'd be an equal chance on the second, one out of two, just multiply across one fourth or 25%. The probability of getting at least one tails, that would kind of vary based on what your um, experiment looked like. All right, so Kristen, or Kirsten owns a pair of black and blue jeans. She has red, white, and red, green, and yellow shirts. How many possible outcomes could she make with those? All right, so we have black jeans and blue jeans. And she has red, green, and yellow shirts, red, green, and yellow. All right, so how many outcomes are there? So you want to count these here. So count the lowest branch on your tree. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six outcomes. George flips a coin two times and then rolls a six-sided number cube. What are the possible outcomes of these events? All right, so the first flip could be heads, or it could be tails. That's the first flip. He flips again, he could get heads again. I'll abbreviate here, or tails, heads or tails. Then he rolls a six-sided number cube. So one, two, three, Four, five, six. So as you can see, some of these tree diagrams can take a little bit of time to make. So in the next part of the lesson, I'm going to share a shortcut with you. All right, so anyway, George would have six different outcomes here. Um, Six more here, so that's 12, plus six more is 18, plus six more would be 24. So there are 24 outcomes. Okay, last problem we'll do together on tree diagrams. Jane wants ice cream. Um, I'm going to tell you, you may want to star this problem because you might see something like this on your test. All right, so anyway, the ice cream shop has the above tree or uh, the above tree diagrams in the window to show customers possible combinations of ice cream that they sell. Question one, how many total outcomes? Three, six, nine, 12. So I made my tree diagrams up here going vertically, but they can also go horizontally. So here's 12 different outcomes. 
How many combinations would there be if the ice cream shop added another flavor? Let's say they added strawberry. I'll just abbreviate it with straw. So then you add three more here, three more here. So that would be what? 12 plus 3 is 15, plus 3 more would be 18. How many combinations can Jane get with vanilla ice cream? So you have three combinations here, three here, so six. How many can she get if she run if the ice cream shop runs out of nuts? So you take away one, two, three, four, and that leaves you with eight. Okay, number five. How many combinations can she get with chocolate and strawberries? Um, I see one there and another there, so two.